Thanks. Okay, hi, good afternoon, everyone. So um, thanks for joining the session today. Um, so my name is Juka from Oracle. So today, as Ashika mentioned, right, I will share with you some of the case study, how the Oracle Cloud Engineer is using the AI and ML machine learning technology to help our customers to solve their business problem. Okay, so before that, maybe let me just give you a quick highlight about the agenda today, right? So definitely I will share with you a little bit more about myself and some of the case studies as I mentioned, and what are the roles of the cloud engineering in Oracle? What do we do, okay? And of course, last but not least, we have some time here can leave uh, for you for, to ask some uh, any question that you would like to ask. Okay, so my name is Yuka. So this has been my 15 years in Oracle. Okay, I've been joining, I joined Oracle since 2006 as a pre-sales consultant. So I have been working on uh, with different role, different business unit in Oracle. I starting the role as a pre consultant, as I mentioned, right? So uh, the main thing is to discover the Oracle technology platform. Okay, so if you are familiar with the Oracle database or our middleware from the web logic and so so forth, so this is what we call about the Oracle technology platform. So I starting my career in Oracle doing a lot of pre-sales activities or the demo POC, work with the customer on the architecture uh, to propose all the Oracle technology. Then after that, I have moved my career, okay? Not only look, look after the Oracle technology platform, okay? So because my personal interest is more uh, on the data related, okay? Not just about the data management, about the database, but I really want to help our customer how they can make use of the data to uncover the business use insight, okay, to drive the business value. Right? So that's why I moved into the team called the Big Data and Analytics. So I do a lot of work on the AI, machine learning, uh, all the, a lot of analytics use cases as well. Okay? So that's why today I have this opportunity and very fortunate that I would like to share with you some of the very successful studies okay, that we have been doing working with our customers. Okay, so from there, you will be able to understand more about Oracle, understand more about Oracle Cloud Engineering. What do we do? Okay, so maybe I also give some background about Oracle. Okay, because I know a lot of people know that Oracle, when we are talking about Oracle, it's about the database, right? We have a very robust, very well established uh, database engine in the market for more than 40 years. Right? So, but that is just our, one of our technology platform to help the customer to manage your data. And actually, Oracle has been working with our customer to do more than that. So the most important is how we can help our customer to manage their data, which is the most important asset in the organization and drive the business outcome. So this is the, what we are doing in Oracle nowadays. Right? So if you look at this slide, we are actually working on with different customers from different industries. Okay, we give from the banking, FSI, insurance, manufacturing, healthcare, and so, so forth, across different industry domain, and to help them to drive and adjust different type of the business challenge. So this is the work of the Oracle that we're doing today. And we have a lot of customer success story, and I've been picking few story that are related to the AI and machine learning. Okay, so we'd like to share with you how all these customers using the Oracle technology, how they can make use of this technology to derive the insight from the data that are available within their organization. Okay, so why? Data is so important, right? So I think we are talking about AI machine learning, but eventually the fundamental is about the data. And this is where Oracle has a very strong technology platform here. Okay, so from the bottom is we are not only just helping you to store the data, okay? so how we can help you to protect and secure it. Okay? Since the data is a very important asset in your organization, security is always comes into the chapter that we need to adjust. Okay, different industry have different compliance regulation, different user have different role and privilege. Who should be the person have the right to access the data? All these are the questions that each of the organization is looking into. Yeah. So the protection and security is very important. 
And then once we are able to manage your data very well in a very secure manner, then we can really look into the analyze and the action. Right? So the insight can drive action. This is why we are doing a lot of analytics. And today we are using different AI and machine learning technology to advance all this analysis into the next level to make it to be more automatic, more intelligent, okay? To find out a lot of unforeseen insight that you never think of, okay? So once we have this action, okay, the data is also important because we can share this into different stakeholders, into different systems, okay? Even with your external business partner, okay? So the entire data sharing ecosystem is as important as how we analyze and secure it, right? So that's why Oracle has been putting all this area into the, our, our cloud platform to make the data to be more meaningful. Okay, so now I would like to share with you uh, one of our key study, okay? So I will play a video here, but before I do that, maybe I give you a little bit background about this customer. Okay. So this customer okay, is called Fosmark, okay, in Thailand. Okay. So they are actually is one of the fintech organization in Thailand. They are hosting millions, uh, thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands of the kiosks across the country in Thailand to serve their citizens, to serve the people in the country. Okay. So let me just share with you this video. Then I will come back to explain to you some of the very important message uh, about this case study. Thailand is a developing country. Even though we are world famous for being a tourist attraction, a large part of Thailand is still struggling. A large part of the society is still unbanked. People don't have bank accounts, so this is where we come in. We serve the cash-based sector of the society. Fosmas Corporation provides kiosks for people to pay bills, to transfer money. We provide topping up service for mobile phones. We have more than 120,000 kiosks spread out throughout the country. 90% are outside of the cities. They serve people who live in the rural area and who are unbanked. I เอาบินค่าไฟมาจ่ายกระลานที่จักรยานมาเดือนละครั้งตู้บนเติมใช้ดีใช้ง่ายใกล้บ้านสบายสูงสูงอาชีพผ่าไม้อายุ 67 so people generally have to use cash. Agriculture is the number one employer uh, in Thailand. So many people are involved in this business. There are sugar cane farmers, there are rice growers. ดิฉันนะคะมาทํางานที่ภูเกาะเลียงนะคะอ่ามีหน้าที่ทําสวนนะคะแล้วก็ทํางานนะคะอ่าดิฉันอ่าจะมาทํางานที่ภูเกาะ
Okay, so this is our first case study that we would like to share today for Smart, right? So they have 15 million of the customers across the whole Thailand. So as the owner mentioned, right, just now the, 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 uh, the gentleman who speak in the video actually is the owner of the, uh, it's one of the uh, business uh, analysts in the, this company, right? 15 million of the customer across the Thailand. So one of the top agenda that they would like to do is where should they put this kiosk in the country? The location is very important right? because they cannot anyhow put the kiosk into an area where the utilization is very low. Right? So they want to, the people really can enjoy, can use the services on a daily basis. Right? We use as a top up services, money transfer or the bill payment. Right? A lot of different services that is available in their kiosk. So they are using the AI and machine learning to analyze the location, which location will increase the utilization of the services. Okay. So this is the first agenda they would like to do by using this technology. So to support 100, uh, 150 million of the users, huge volume of the data, they definitely do have a very strong data, uh, data management platform with the analytics capabilities and the machine learning capabilities as well. So they, also make use of the AI and machine learning to analyze what are the other additional services they should introduce into the kiosk as well. Okay, so this is a part of the business planning. Okay, who will be the business partner they should work together with to incorporate all the services into the kiosk so that they can increase the utilization of the machine, but at the same time, also getting more and more people benefit of all the services that are available as well. Okay. So this is what the fourth smart doing here uh, today, how they are using the uh, Oracle AI and machine learning. Okay. Number one, understand the location basis. Where is the location that they should put the kiosk? Second, understand about the customer need. Okay. What are the need? What are the new services that uh, they are looking for? And the third is about the customer experience, right? Okay, so this is about the case study of the map. So this is just one of the case study, okay, that we are uh, released as a perfect reference. And indeed, today, if you look into our daily life, AI and machine learning is actually around us. Okay, everything that we are doing, every application or the mobile apps that, that we are using very often in our life is also embedding some forms of the AI and machine learning already. Okay, so whether you are looking for uh, watching some of the online TV series or movie, you always have some recommendation to suggest you based on your preference. Okay, they, those application is fully understand your personalized need. Okay, so that they can give you the recommendation. Okay, so even the, the financial uh, industry is also using AI and machine learning to detect any fraud in a real-time manner. Right? So the fraud detection, even the robot trading as well, using the AI to help the people to investment, right? to invest uh, as well. So this is what the financial industry is doing. A lot of a lot of use cases that is already around us, and actually we are also the user of the AI in some forms and shape. So. With this, we do see the demand of the AI and machine learning in the market in different organization, different industry. So mainly they are, would like to drive different business initiative. Okay, it's whether it's the customer satisfaction, how they can faster time to market, or go to market, increase the productivity and the efficiencies. All this is the business initiative that they would like to do. And of course, the most important is how all these companies can achieve and drive all this AI initiative. They definitely need to have the data. They also definitely have the very robust technology that can manage a huge volume of the data and at the same time can do the analytics and support them to develop, to build, train, and apply different type of the AI and machine learning model. So this is coming to the technology angle. But the most important is about the people. Okay, it's a talent because the people is not only understand about the technology. For every AI project to be successful, 
the persons who are involved in this project, they will need to understand the business as well. They need to understand what are the business drivers, what are the customer is looking for, then how this technology can apply and transform into a business value. So that's why the tenant is also equally important as the data and the technology as well. Okay, so now, so what is Oracle is doing? So just now I shared with you about the fourth part, it is a very um, you know, touching story, right? You can see it. those users who are staying in the rural area, they actually can benefit from this AI and machine learning technology. So I have been picking up another two case study here that I would like to share with you, okay? That you may, I hope you will find uh, interesting, okay? So the first story, is the video that I'm going to show you here. Okay, it's about the spot. Okay, so this is another story that I would like to share with you. It's the Red Bull Racing Honda. Okay, so it's the F1 spot activities. Okay, unfortunately, in Singapore today, this year, we cannot have our F1 here, but actually the F1 never stopped. Okay, they are still having the different race in different country. Okay, the people are still watching this online, right? So what did they do? How did they make use of the AI and machine learning? So when we come to the F1, we see all these racing cars, the first thing I think we are thinking of is how the technology can improve the performance right? to make the car drive faster, how to make the driver mentally and physically more adopt and have a better performance in every single race. Right? So this is how the technologies can help to, uh, in the AI and machine learning area. But actually, in this case, the team, in addition to those to, uh, racing car performance, Red Bull Racing is also looking into other business outcome. Okay. So this is because of the transformation of the business model. Okay. If you look at the F1, the business model is totally different from 10, 15 years ago. Okay? Last time, if you want to watch the F1, okay, so there's a few ways for you to do. Either you buy the airline ticket, book the F1 race, buy, book the hotel, you fly overseas. Okay, then you can watch this as a local fans. Or you have, have a satellite TV that you can enjoy all this F1, F1 racing on, at home, okay, watching the TV. Okay, but now the model is totally different because as a F1 racing team, what they want to do is, is not only limit themselves to have the fans in the country. They would like to expand the, their fans footprint globally. Okay, because now the technology, people is interconnected. Right? They can easily use the internet and connect it to the competition. Okay. So this is allow them to have a better chance, easier to reach out to different global fan space. And at the same time, the way that they enjoy or to watch all this racing is not limited to at home anymore. Right? A lot of on top TV, on demand subscription, allow them to use any device that, that they are in any location, anywhere, they still can watch all this racing. Okay. But this is also coming with, with uh, some other questions. Okay. Why should I watch a F1 race, but not watching any other entertainment program? Right? So I have so many movies that allow me to subscribe. Right? I have a lot of different TV series. I also have different programs that allow us to watch on demand as a subscription basis. So this is a question where the Red Bull Racing is thinking of. Okay. So what they what really want to do is, how they can make use of the AI and machine learning technology to make all the audience to be more engaged, okay? especially their global fan space who are not watching those ways in the country in the value. Okay, they want to make the entire experience to be more engaged. This is the objective that they want to do. And at the same time, by doing this, that will allow them to create a better branding value. Okay, so. You know, we all know that Red Bull itself is not a automotive, okay? They're also not a car manufacturer, okay? They are 
main business is during the beverage, right? F&B mm-hmm. business. Okay. So the branding actually is equally important. If they are able to reach out to a bigger global fan, fan space, more people know about the brand of the Red Bull, then this will increase the branding value as well. Then indirectly, this also can help them to drive more revenue in the e-commerce platform and any other thing. Okay. So this is why we are talking about the business model, even with the F1 racing team, it has been transformed totally uh, differently compared to the past. Okay. So now, when they use the Oracle AI and machine learning technology, so now they are able to analyze a lot of information in real time. Okay, they're able to capture the data during the race. From the driver itself, from the racing car itself, a lot of data can be collected. And then they are making use of this data doing different type of the forecast and prediction to give some additional insight to the audience like myself sitting at home, or I just use my mobile device as an application to watch all this different race. Okay? So I will be able to be looked into different statistic that I use, uh, that I won't be able to get in the past. Okay. So what kind of statistics that I will be able to see as an audience? Some of the example is the statistic about the racing car, right? Uh, even the, the, the data that they are collecting and they are publishing is even those about the tire situation, okay? So we all know that in one of the F1 race, the racing car, you, you go into the pit stop, change the tire a few times, right? And based on the weather condition, based on different situation, okay? So all this data, all this statistic, now a day will be able to publish to all of us as the audience, right? We can see, okay, how or well, when will be the, the, the next time that the, the car will go into the base, base stop and change the tire. And what are the pressure, what are the temperature, and even all this information we'll be able to capture and share as well. And at the same time, they also gather and collect a lot of the data regarding to the driver, okay, to share to all of us, okay. What are the mental and the body physical condition of the driver now? Okay, in the race, during the beginning of the race, in the middle, or even at the end stage of the race, okay, when before they cross the finish line, like right, all these statistics will be able to gather and share as well. Okay. So this is how we are uh, partnership with Red Bull Racing today. Right? So this is not as pure as a vendor and customer relationship. What we are doing is really a partnership. We are helping our customer Red Bull Racing with use of the Oracle AI and machine learning technology and our full spectrum of the cloud capabilities okay, to drive all the business initiatives that I mentioned earlier. Okay? To increase the global fan base, to make the racing car performance faster, better, share all the statistics to the audience so that to make the entire watching experience is totally different, to make it to be more engaging. So this is what we are doing here. I didn't catch that. Could okay. you- then another case study. Okay. So mm-hmm. then some of you maybe is a football fans. And one month ago, we start to have the new season of the Premier League. I'm not sure whether you have been observed okay, or noticed. That actually, there's some statistic has been public during the every match in the broadcast. Okay? So there's an Oracle banner where they publish all these statistics. And all these statistics is about the game. Okay? And this is the analysis case study that I would like to share with you because some of you maybe is already really experienced it. Okay? So mm-hmm. this partnership is with the Premier League in UK. So they are also using the Oracle AI and machine learning technology to do all the real-time prediction during the match. Okay, so because nowadays PMNIT is already able to capture a lot of the data, okay, during the match from the player, from the, the all the video uh, capturing as well. So there's a lot of real-time that they are already able to capture in the real-time madness. So, with the data available, the next thing they want to do is 
how they can enrich it, how they can make use of this data and share with the, uh, all the football fans who are watching the matches uh, on the TV. Okay, so there's a few scenario. I think maybe you already can see is every 10, 15 minutes during the broadcast live, uh, live match. There's some statistics like what are the win probabilities? Okay, what are the formation or the procession that the both team are doing? Okay, all this information has been published on the TV already. Right? So with, last time, without all this information, we are always looking at the TV, looking at how the player is running, passing, shooting, right? So if you are a very diehard football fan, definitely you will enjoy all this because you really can understand why the player is making this decision. But now we are on top of that, we are adding in some other information that you may never think of, okay? Or maybe you never experience it, okay? And for example, the formation of the ball possession, right? So this is something that is not easy to see on a visual manner. okay? I mean, in the real time, okay? Of course, during the half time, you will see the, that some information, some statistics will be published. But in a real time manner, this is a new area that we are putting in, um, in this new season, okay? So another scenario like the, or the momentum tracker, how the both team is doing, whether they are all the 90 minutes is attacking or defending, right? So all this pattern analysis has been putting in here, win probabilities or given we can analyze the every shooting that are given by a tracker, okay? What are the probability that this shooting will convert it into a goal or not? All this is about the statistic and this is fully powered by the Oracle AI and machine learning. Okay, so the idea for the people to do this is, again, is want to give a game-changing new experience to the fans. So even though we are sitting overseas, we are not on the stadium watching the match, but we are been able to supplement a lot of new statistics, new information across the 19 minutes of the matches. And this is the idea why the PM is want to do it and partner it with Oracle as well. Okay, so I have been sharing with you few case study from the fourth smart, how they use the AI to machine learning so that the people in the country can benefit of the services. Then from the Red Bull Racing and until now the premium need, this is all about how to make the fans to be more engaged, give them a totally new experience when they are watching all this TV program. Right. So if you look at all this scenario, okay, the company they're using AI machine learning is not just directly just want to make more revenue. Okay, they really want to change the style or change the pattern of the people, okay, by giving them a new experience. Okay. So this is the power of AI and machine learning. There's a, a lot of scenario that can be created. And this is also how, why the cloud engineering is important in this manner. Okay. So in the next few slides, I would like to share with you what are the roles of the Oracle Cloud Engineering, okay. what we are doing, and what are the some of the attributes or the sales soft skills that we need okay, in order for us to work very closely with our customer to help them to drive the business outcome. Okay. So let's look at this. Okay. So the customer centricity is always comes to the number. Okay. We must be able to put ourselves into the customer's shoes to understand why they have all this initiative. Why do we need to do this? Okay. Before we talk about the technology, we must understand about the customer. Okay, and this is also the why we want to say this is the most important. Is without understanding the customer better, or without putting ourselves in the customer shoes, we won't be able to help the customer to drive the business outcome successfully. Okay. Even though you are very good in the data analytics, you are very good in the AI and machine learning, but understanding the customer business is equally important. Okay. Then the second is about the proactive thinking. Okay. 
Quoting thinking means we are not just waiting for the customer to tell us what they want to do. Sometimes because we are working with different customer or even the customer in other industry, there's a lot of reference that could be able to apply to your own customer as well. Okay, so if we, once we are able to understand why the customer or what the customer want to do, why they want to make use of AI and machine learning to drive the business outcome, be it is to make their customer excellent better, to drive more revenue, to comply with the regulation, reduce the risk, and so on and so forth. Right? So we can always can have a very proactive mind share with our customer. Okay. Then of course, teamwork and collaboration is also important. Okay. Even though as a car engineer, okay, you are fully understand the customer business. Okay. You are also very good into the technology of AI and machine learning. But the success of the project, the success of the initiative is all about the teamwork. Okay, especially in Oracle, we have a different business unit really can support each other. Everyone has a role to play. We support different function, but the core object objective is to make the customer to be successful. Okay, and collaboration is also means you must have a very good communication with the internal and external. Okay, external will be your customer that we are working with, right? And even with the customer. They may have different stakeholder. Different stakeholder may have different agenda, different initiative. So we must be very, very uh, well coordinated in all this uh, area. Then the last, then we only come about talk about the technology. Okay, this is where we have to be more self motivated. Okay, we all know that technology is moving very, very fast. Right. So for us to pick up to all the new trend, all the new technology, we all have to be very self-motivated, okay? We have to be very keen to learn, very, very eager to learn all this new technology, okay? So this is all the soft skill and the personal attribute is required as part of the cloud engineering team, okay? Customer centricity, proactive mind share, collaboration teamwork, and the self-motivated. Okay. Then how about the technical skills, right? No matter how, in the car engineering, we are using the Oracle technology to help our customer to solve the problem, solve the business problem, right? So technical skills is also important. Right? So of course, we are looking for different skill sets to complement our team with each other. Right? The case study that I mentioned to you earlier is more towards on the analytics, machine learning, or even nowadays we're talking about all the data lake, right? Or the cloud data warehouse. So this is why we are make use of this technology to build and propose an AI and machine learning uh, uh, project. Okay, but at the same time, in the cloud engineering team, we are also having the people have other skill sets. For example, we also need the people who have the skill sets with the technology or application development, who are the person with more as a like cloud native. Okay, they understand all those uh, containers and the, uh, open sources technology, application integration as well. Okay. Okay. Because all this is also equally important to drive our customer business initiative. Because not all the business initiative will be adjusted by the AI and machine learning. Okay, we also need other solution. Okay, we could be to uh, orchestrate the business process better. Okay, to make it to be more smooth uh, so that the, 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 the productivities and the efficiencies can be improved. Okay. Okay. So this is other area that we are looking for. And of course, before we are talking about all this application development, analytics, AI, and machine learning, another layer is also important is about the infrastructure. We must have a very good foundation with the very purpose built infrastructure that allow us to scale up and down at any time, or we can provide the high availabilities, always can provide a very strong security practice, okay? for us to secure all our data and application. 
So the infrastructure is also very important. And this is also another area that we need the people who have the technical skill set in the crowd engineering. Okay, so there's a lot of different technical skills is actually required. Okay, uh, with the car engineering. Okay, but of course we are not saying that every car engineering has to be specialized in all this area. Okay, usually as a team member in the car engineering, we will be specialized in field of the buses in this slide. Okay, we will be very specialized in this area, so that. But other engineer or architect will be specialized in any other area as well, so that the team can complement. Okay, so now Oracle has been very aggressively expand our crowd footprint. Okay, so this is also where we are aiming, right, to help our customer to achieve the business outcome even more. Okay, because we do have different data center or crowd region across the world today. And even for Singapore, the upcoming region will be launched in the next one to two months. And that's why we are also expecting in Singapore, we will be having had more successful case study in the future. Okay, so this is um, what we are doing in Oracle in this region. Okay, so I think um, I've been taking you all about 40 minutes of time, giving you some of the case study and the skill set uh, attribute is required as a part of the car engineering. And some information I also want to share. Okay, so this is one of the area where we just announced last Friday. Okay. It's a very hot, very latest announcement where we are giving all this free online training and certification. For those people who are interested to know about the auto crowd infrastructure, Okay, so all this training and certification will be given for free. Okay, so just take out your mobile phone. We have a QR code here. Feel free to scan it. Then you will see a more detailed information. We're telling you what are those online training courses? What are those certification that we are offering for free? And in the next three and a half months, okay, you will have definitely have a sufficient time to take this course, prepare yourself, and get a site OCI certified. Okay, so this is one of the announcements that we just announced last Friday. And at the same time, okay, this is another QR code. Okay, so if you want to know more about the job opening of the Oracle Cloud Engineering, okay, or if you are interested or you're keen, you want to see whether yourself is suitable to be part of it. We do have another QR code here where you will be able to find out some of the job opening that we have been published, okay, in Singapore. Okay, so this is the Singapore Cloud Engineering team that we are expanding and we are also looking for more talented people to join us as well. So this QR code will be the area that we can find out more details information. And the last but not least, before we move to the Q&A, okay? So any question that you would like to ask more, okay? Or anything you would like to know more about the crowd engineering, just feel free to drop us a message with this QR code, or you can use this, the URL that we have published in the slide here, okay? So feel free to continue to contact us with any question that you have, any inquiry, uh, welcome. Okay, so this is what I would like to share with you today about how we use the AI machine learning as a cloud engineer. 